Welcome back, everyone. It is December 14th, 1941. We're back in the saddle with a another episode of Alphabet Command. Our co-op game with Avokin and I versus actually a new opponent. So, um, unfortunately, our former opponent, Guptony, uh, we had a disagreement about a... Uh, problem with the uh, database that gave a IJA bomber um, two armor, a heavy bomber two armor later in the game. This was an error. Uh, it was not supposed to uh, uh, be this way. There are no heavy bombers in the game with, with two armor. Um, and um, we tried to work it out. It didn't, <laughs> didn't work out, unfortunately. And uh, Gakutani decided that he did not want to continue the game, which is really unfortunate. I felt that uh, he had done a really masterful job with uh, the Japanese side. Um, so the game, of course, has been on hiatus for a couple of uh, weeks. But uh, luckily, uh, we have managed to find a new opponent, and his name is Andy Mack. Uh, Andy Mack... Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, um, War in the Pacific Ad Admirals Edition, is um, kind of a legend in the War in the Pacific scene. He created the AI scripts uh, for War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, and he continues to create new and interesting uh, single-player versus AI scenarios uh, that make the game new and exciting and more of a challenge. Uh, in fact, the War in the uh, Pacific, um, Focus Pacific mod that we're playing now takes its, uh, um, it takes its Japanese order of battle that it's based on, has a lot of other additions too, but it's based on Andy Mack's Iron Man scenario. In any case, we're very, very excited to have this new opponent, uh, who, uh, who's going to be taking Japan for a run and giving Evoken and I a run for our money. Uh, let's see how this turn plays out. And by the way, you'll notice this is December 14th. We did skip a turn in all that drama uh, surrounding uh, Guktini leaving and us finding Andy Mack. But you really didn't miss much in the previous turn. It was really kind of more of the same. No big battles uh, went on. But uh, what did happen, we'll talk about as the turn goes on. That's enough of me talking. Let's get into the turn. We start off with a little ASW action here next to Osthaven. Again, these Japanese subs really patrolling this area, and I have a lot of ASW trying to catch them. You also see uh, some mines laid in this hex by uh, probably one of those subs. I <laughs> have some AKLs that escape based on them just being not valuable enough to uh, waste torpedoes on. It's a good ASW action here. Four hits, which is nice to see. Hopefully that'll send that sub back to the yards, at least temporarily. Tarpon gets caught here around Talad, Yolandin. Uh, you can see he has his carrier groups and service task forces headed to the southwest. We tried to catch him with all these subs uh, earlier uh, around Talad, Yolandin, but he kind of moved to the southwest. I have some Dutch subs that are going to be patrolling this area as well around turn 8. We'll see if they catch up or not. Some surface combat. It looks like his PT boats, Evoken's PT boats, uh, run into a Japanese surface task force, and one of those PT boats, of course, uh, sinks. By the way, the volume sound sounds really kind of off in my headphones. Hopefully, that's not the case in the finished video. Uh, more PT boat action here. Light cruiser task force uh, escorted by some destroyers. Uh, running into some PT boats, inconclusive there, around Hawaii. I think he sent those to, yeah. Uh, Evoken's trying to get some PT boats into these landing forces at Kona. Unfortunately, hasn't been able to so far. More ASW action here around Oosthaven and Batavia. We'll 
looks like we're on to the night air phase. Hopefully we'll see some bombing here. Night air phase going very slowly here. Our night naval search finds the uh, carriers that are still there uh, uh, at Kuantan. Not much we can do about that right now. He has 300 fighters on the ground, plus all those fighters uh, in the hex. Uh, but we're still trying to do some night bombing. In effect, right now, we just lose a Hudson to Flak. But with so many fighters being concentrated at Kuantan, uh, if we do land hits on that airfield, there's a chance that we could destroy some planes on the ground. Last turn, which of course you didn't see, we did manage to uh, destroy some zeros on the ground that way at this base. He does have zeros flying cap at night. Evoken is also trying to do some bombing. I think there's about 150 Japanese fighters uh, here at Iba. SS Seal surfaces to take on this uh, AKL. Hey, yeah, four hits and a torpedo hits. Great job by this uh, American submarine. Uh, definitely going to sink that AKL, I think. Yeah, we hear this ship sinking sound. So good job from Evoken subs there. Oh, and uh, one of my Dutch subs, it looks like the K-18, uh, takes a hit but uh, manages to put a torpedo into this APD at Groot Natona. I'm not sure what these APDs are doing, if they're offloading or unloading, uh, but in any case, we managed to put a torpedo in it. It's a small ship, so that's some pretty serious damage to an APD. And we hear the ship sinking sound, so we did manage to sink it. So great job to our submarine so far. Some bombarding of Johnston Island by a Japanese battleship group. I'm not sure if there's much for uh, them to bombard, but I'm sure that Johnson Island will get invaded here in the near future. Yeah, lots of ground casualties, so they did a good job with that. No spotters, surprisingly, but still managed to do a lot of damage. Uh, AK, which was heavily damaged here, goes down. More naval bombardment here. And yeah, he's invading here. Uh, just loses a few squads on the unload. Johnson Island will get taken over here pretty quick. It's an atoll, which means that there will be an automatic uh, shock attack uh, this turn it'll probably go his way. There's really not much in the way of allied forces at Johnston. Long night phase here. There we are into the day phase. Lots of reaction of ASW patrols. Some loading, unloading. Here's more of that uh, Invasion. Lots of AMCs there at Johnston. Just a few hits on the Invasion Task Force, and it looks like no troops lost there. Unfortunately, didn't manage to take any of those out. Um, saw some minesweeping action there. I had some local minesweepers take care of those mines at... Uh, it's not Osthaven, the uh, area across from Osthaven. PT boats run into a tough time there near uh, uh, Pearl Harbor. More ASW action here. Oh, and uh, the K-12 managed to put two torpedoes into this tanker. Uh, nice, that's a nice little pickup. And we do hear the ship sinking sound. So yeah, great job there. Uh, permit runs into the surface task force. Um, does not get hit though, which is good. Oh, and again, also managed to avoid it. More TP PT boats here. With this cruiser task force, I think chasing them here. And one of them gets hit by a single shell and it's sunk. PT boats are incredibly fragile.
lots of reacting here. More PT boats, and with these destroyers, um, Evokin's really trying to use his PT boats uh, to maximum effect, making uh, the surface task force waste their ammunition, waste their movement points, and uh, uh, kind of disrupt things and being a pain uh, for, uh, for our opponent here. Oh, and the K-16 uh, puts a torpedo into uh, a PB. Yeah, two torpedoes. She's going to go down. Nice performance from Dutch subs this turn. And we're on to the air phase. Let's see what happens here. First, we've got the recon phase of the air phase. And we're snooping around, finding subs, finding ships, uh, doing a recon on bases. That's what all these different messages are. So sweeping over Pearl Harbor. I do some sweeping over the hex next to Quentin. Still no cap over that hex, which surprises me. Um, I was going to bomb it, but I decided not to. I'm like, hey, he has 300 fighters here. All he needs to do is expand his cap by one hex, and I'm going to have a rough time if the bombers try to go in. Um, turned out I could have. Well, oh well. I am doing some sweeping over Sma, and we destroy an Oscar, no losses of our own. I have one good French MS-410 fighter group with great experience here, and uh, they're kind of my best sweepers in this area. Looks like we already ran out of our background music here, so I apologize about that. That's just going to be me talking and the sound effects from now on. Um, Kate's um, go after uh, Pearl Harbor, uh, destroying and damaging some of those B-17s left on the ground that aren't in a flyable state yet. All right, so there was a issue with the recording there. Um, it uh, broke up a little bit. So this is part two of uh, um, part two here of the uh, replay. Uh, Lily's bombing Hong Kong. One gets destroyed by flak. Uh, I imagine Hong Kong will probably fall this turn. Catalinas go after. Oh, nicely done. Go after a uh, some AKs here. Three torpedoes in the Santa Coma Maru. One in the Shiro Gain Maru. Um, yeah, really nicely done. And they were carrying troops. So good job to Evoken. Flying there from Cebu and sinking some ships. More come in. Unfortunately, they only managed to get one more to torpedo in. But again, more casualties and these ships are going to have a rough time. Some of my uh, Dorniers come in. I managed to plant a bomb on the uh, Issa, the battleship there. Uh, probably going to get invaded there uh, today, I imagine. And we do some more bombing here uh, at Paseno Loque. Uh, 151 casualties, pretty darn good. He's trying to move some forts there to Rahang and I'd like to slow them down and uh, disable them a little bit. Uh, as you can see, he also has troops at Chiang Mai, which are headed to Pegu. It's going to be a race against time to see if I can get enough AV in Pegu uh, before these forces uh, get there. Um, and it's also really hard to bomb them. This is jungle rough terrain in these two hexes. He won't be vulnerable until he gets to this hex, which is just jungle terrain, and I can do a little damage there. More bombing, again with good results. Did a port attack here at Sama. We saw some ships at anchor there before. I think they may be gone though.
There's some more of that port bombing. Nope, they're still there. And our Glyn 167Fs carrying all those 50 kilogram bombs do a, a really good job. Look at this. So we sink a motor, motor torpedo boat. That's not very exciting, but uh, some good damage and fires on the rest of these ships. We're sweeping there. Sweeping above Guam. Val's attacking at Guam, and Guam is not holding it up as well as I thought it would. Um, the attack there uh, reduced forts last turn, and I think Guam may fall. Onto the PM air phase. Uh, he sweeps uh, right outside of Singapore. I just have some martlets uh, in the area. They get swept aside easily. This time, more cap rises. It's uh, Tojos are facing this time, and my planes are just getting just get absolutely uh, uh, wrecked by those Tojos. I lose five and uh, don't take any out. Here comes more. This time, Oscars again. Uh, they managed to take out one of my planes with no trouble. More Oscars this time, and this time more Cap rises to uh, uh, meet them, but still aren't able to take out any of his planes, and he takes out three of ours. Ouch. Not what we like to see here, guys. And Zero's taking out four of our planes, uh, and no losses uh, of theirs. Really unfortunate that... Uh, we're not getting better results there. This time, 19 me Oscars. This time, it looks like we're doing a little bit of damage. Just a little bit, though. We only take one out and lose two of our own planes there. So not a good result near Singapore. Looks like the KB is going to plaster Johnston Island. Um, some of these atolls can be really vulnerable to air attack from carriers, and I think to see that here. Yeah, 92 losses. Uh, it's really going to be softened up for his shock attack later today. Our zeros come in, and again, we uh, just get wrecked in the air there, losing a martlet. gonna have to pull my uh, fighters in a little bit uh, to just, I think, cover Singapore. Oscar 1 sees this time. Again, no dice as uh, they sweep and my fighters uh, just don't, uh, don't perform well and I lose two more. That's it for the air phases. The uh, K-13, unfortunately, uh, it's not able to connect there. More ASW near Oosthaven. And here's that uh, invasion again at uh, Johnson Island. Looks like two different invasion forces there. Some good damage to that one there. And he's invading Sarong as well. Surprised that we didn't see a bombardment by that battleship task force that uh, we put a, a torpedo in. Or excuse me, a bomb in. So yeah, Sarong is going to fall uh, very shortly as well. I'll have to move my planes out of there. And here's that shock attack at Hong Kong. I think that's going to be it for the base. Yep, Hong Kong is going to fall. We're going to hear War for Nan. There we go. Hong Kong. 
So a pretty devastating loss there, but it's one that as an allied player you expect to happen. Uh, there's no uh, scenario that you don't lose Hong Kong in the first couple of weeks of the war if the Japanese player has brought the, uh, the troops from Canton. Um, good news is, of course, that I have ferried out most of these units already, and um, they're safely at uh, uh, Quang Chowan. Uh, most of them at least, at least the cadres are, and now they'll uh, kind of flee north and try to get to, uh, to Burma. So uh, the bulk of the units have been saved, but the remainder just got uh, pasted there at Hong Kong. Shock attack at Guam, two to one, reduces fortifications to zero. Uh, that way he takes a lot of damage doing that uh, that attack compared to our defenders, but still Guam is not in a good place here. Johnson Island, yeah, it's... I'm shocked that it did not fall that turn. Um, I guess he was a little bit disrupted, but yeah, really uh, surprised that uh, it stuck around, but it'll fall very, very quickly. Uh, forts were uh, reduced from three, <laughs> all the way to zero. So uh, the next time he attacks, he won't have to deal with those level three forts. A bombardment action at Guam. That automatically happens uh, often after a hex is invaded. Lots of it, us increasing our uh, forts. So kind of a mixed day uh, today. Um, definitely some setbacks in the air around Singapore. Very disappointed with how we performed there uh, against those sweeps. But um, we had some good sub action today, and those Catalinas going after uh, that shipping in the South China Sea there was uh, a welcome little uh, uh, boost. And really, the, the positive thing here is that we didn't take any huge losses, we didn't take any uh, devastating um, losses. So Again, this early in the game, uh, that's what we want to see. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's good to be back in the saddle uh, playing this game again. And uh, we'll see you in the Discord. Take care, everyone.